So hello guys, welcome back. In this video, we'll try to understand how to interpret the regression results. And for this, I'm using uh, econometrics by example by Damodar Gujarati. And this example is from chapter number two, where we are essentially running a regression of Cobb Douglas production function for United States. So what you are essentially doing is your dependent variable is logarithm of output. First independent variable is logarithm of labor input. Second independent variable is logarithm of capital input. So this is essentially Cobb Douglas production function expressed in logarithm form. So this regression function is also called as double log regression function. This beta 1 and beta 2, they are, you know, respective with the constant elasticity coefficients. That is beta 1 gives you the elasticity of output with respect to labor input. Beta 2 gives you elasticity of output with respect to capital input. Okay. So your dependent variable is logarithm of output, method is least squares, number of observations included is 51. These are your, you know, this is the coefficient term, this is your logarithm of labor input, logarithm of capital input, and associated values of these is given in this column. So beta naught takes a value of 3.887600, beta 1 takes a value of 4.68332, similarly beta 2 takes a value of 0.8. 521279. Associated standard error of these coefficients, you must understand that they are, you know, random variables because they depend on the values from values on x and y. So associated standard error of beta naught is 0.396228. Associated standard error of beta 1 and beta 2 is 0.098926 and 0.096887 respectively. This column of T statistic is a is actually about you know t statistic related to these beta naught beta 1 and beta 2 so beta naught ka t statistic hai 9.811 beta 1 ka t statistic hai 4.73 and beta 2 ka t statistic is 5.38 this column which tells you the p value and you must understand what exactly we mean by p value because nowadays many software you know uh, also uh, gives you the results of p value so p value is is essentially a probability value so it has to lie between uh, you know a number 0 and 1 and what p value actually does is it gives you the lowest level of significance lowest level of significance lowest level of significance at which your null hypothesis is rejected please keep this in mind that this is a very very important uh, you know value it gives you or it it gives you direction regarding you know, not able to reject the hypothesis or reject the hypothesis. Okay, so let us now go ahead and understand the, you know, this interpretation. So exactly the coefficient that is beta naught takes a value of 3.887600. Beta 1 is 0.46. That is, it gives you the elasticity of output with respect to labor input. That is, uh, one percentage change in labor input will result in you know, 0.46 percentage change in your logarithm y. Similarly, this capital input ka coefficient is 0.52. Now, one thing you must understand that this t statistic essentially, if I'm assuming a test of significance, that is test of significance mein aap kya karte hai? That is you, you assume your null hypothesis to be, let's take example of any, you know, any of these coefficients. So, we say that beta 1 is equal to 0. That is essentially logarithm of labor input has got no role in, you know, predicting or analyzing the variation in logarithm of y. So basically t statistic kya hota hai? t statistic you can, you know, generally get, you have this coefficient value. So coefficient value divided by its standard error will be associated t value. And you can check this out. Let us use this, you know, uh, so I have, let us check for this. So three point eight eight seven six double zero this is the coefficient value divided by its associated standard error so point three nine six two two eight and you see the result uh, is this nine point eight one one five two two six no so you must understand that this t statistic is nothing but coefficient divided by standard error similarly this t statistic of 4.73 will be nothing but this value divided by this and similarly 5.38 will you will get 
0.52 divided by this standard error. Okay, now so these are the probability values associated with this t statistic. Or a or cheese yada kega that lower the p value, greater is the chance of rejecting the null hypothesis. And what do I mean by rejecting the null hypothesis? Here by null hypothesis is that you know these coefficients are equal to zero. That is, they are insignificant. So when you reject the null hypothesis, what it essentially means is that these you know uh, variables or these independent variables are statistically significant. So it is yada kega lower the p value. Greater is the chance of rejection of null hypothesis because I told you that p value is nothing but lowest level of significance. And you know, these alpha that we generally assume 0.5 percent. So, when you have p value, you need not assume any values of alpha. So, alpha depends on the researcher, however, p value is greatly associated with you know this t statistic. What, what uh, you know, in other words, you should also understand that. Is t statistic ke aane ka kitna probability hai? That's what p-value tells you, right? So lower the p-value, greater is the chance of rejection of, of null hypothesis in, you know, reference to test of significance. Test of significance where you try to understand whether one, you know, independent variable is, is statistically significant or not. Okay. So uh, I'm sure you are able to understand this now. So let us, you know, view other, you know, things that are given. So this is R square. R square is 0.96. That is quite high. That is, it, it tells you that combinedly, you know, labor input and capital input explains 96% of variation in logarithm of y. And this is adjusted R square. You must understand that R square has certain limitations. You, uh, and if you want to understand the limitations of R square, you can, you know, uh, go back to the lecture series. Uh, I think uh, lecture number six talks about unadjusted R square and adjusted R square. So adjusted R square value is quite high. This SE of regression stands for standard error of regression. Sometimes it is also called a standard error of estimate. And we must understand this standard error of regression is nothing but your residual sum of squares divided by n minus k, where n is total number of observation and k is the total number of you know coefficients that you are trying to estimate, including uh, the uh, uh, the coefficient. Uh, the, is, sorry, the constant coefficient. This sum square residual is nothing but summation of you know residuals ka square term. Log like log likelihood is you know is an estimator by itself, so we are not going to discuss about it here. This F statistic, F statistics gives you overall significance. So F statistic is nothing but your ESS upon RSS. That is, it gives you a, a proportion of you know. Uh, explain sum of squares out of, you know, uh, uh, or you can say uh, ESS upon RSS gives me the overall fit of the regression. And associated p-value of F statistic is, is, is almost zero. That is, you reject your null hypothesis. My null hypothesis in case of F statistic will be that combinedly beta 1 and beta 2 is equal to zero. So it means that, you know, uh, uh, the regression that I have fitted using logarithm of labor and logarithm of capital is, is good enough. Okay, so this Durbin Watson statistic, if you are aware, this, this, this is also called as D stack, and this is for auto correlation. And you must understand that Durbin Watson statistic value lies between 0 and 4, and closer the value of D to 0, greater the chance of having, sorry, Greater the chance of having negative autocorrelation, sorry, positive autocorrelation, and closer the value is to 4, greater the chance of negative autocorrelation. And if your D statistic lies close to value 2, it means there is no autocorrelation. So you must understand here my D statistic lies very, very close to value 2. So there is, you know, evidence of no autocorrelation. Now, this archaic information criteria and SOAS information criteria are other two criterion apart from adjusted R squared, which are used to compare to regression, which differs in terms of, you know, their explanatory variables. So, we'll talk about this, uh, you know, uh, in our future lectures. This mean dependent variable, that is a dependent variable ka mean, here my dependent variable is logarithm of y values. 
and similarly here standard deviation of dependent variable is this. So overall this is how you should interpret the results of regression. Couple of things that you should keep in mind and, uh, and those things are, uh, let me write it here. You know, first thing that you have to understand, how do we exactly understand this t-statistic? So t-statistic kya hai aapka? t-statistic is nothing but coefficient divided by standard error. You know, and you, you must understand that this basically I'm talking in terms of test of significance hypothesis where you implicitly assume there is a beta naught or beta 1 or beta 2 is equal to 0. Okay. Okay, and what and then next thing that you have to understand properly is or you you know you must read on such concepts that is called your p value. P value. So p value kya hai aapka? P value gives you the lowest level of significance at which your null hypothesis is rejected. So greater is the value that is p value closer to zero higher is the chance of your null hypothesis getting rejected, right? In this example, in this particular example, I have used double log production function or double log regression function. So what double log is also called as constant elasticity regression function, whereby the slope estimates, they are nothing but your constant elasticity of, you know, dependent variable with respect to these independent variables. Okay, so R square gives you the, you know, uh, how much proportion of variation is explained by explanatory variables in the variation of independent, uh, dependent variable. SE of regression is nothing but your, you know, uh, RSS upon, you know, N minus K. F statistics gives you overall uh, fit. Durbin Watson statistic is for your autocorrelation. You must understand that D statistic lies, you know, between 0 and 4, jitna zyada 0 ke kareeb hoga value, utna zyada aapka chance hai ki autocorrelation hai positive sense mein and jitna zyada 4 ke kareeb hoga value, utna zyada chance hai negative autocorrelation honne ka. And if you want to understand what autocorrelation essentially is, we'll cover this, you know, uh, violation, we'll cover autocorrelation under violation of CLRM. So, uh, yes, so this is regarding how do we actually interpret the regression result. Guys, uh, 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 in the next video, uh, we are going to solve 20 multiple choice questions on econometrics that have appeared in, you know, previous question, pa question papers of entrance, entrance examination of Delhi School of Economics. So, uh, just look forward to that. Thank you.